What's up guys? We are back with the second entry in a line that I have just been dying and dying to, to kind of get moving again. So the first figure in this line came out what, almost a year and a half ago, I think. It was my strongest contender for top figure of 2020 until kind of the last moment. Uh, but it is definitely a line that I am just wanting more and more of as quickly as possible. So today we're taking a look at the Sentinel Toys Ronin Warriors. Uh, this is Sage of the Halo. So the first figure in the line was uh, Rio of the Wildfire. He's the leader, so that makes sense. And then for number two, we are getting uh, Sage. So this is, uh, he's not my favorite Ronin Warrior. My favorite is usually Kento, so chances are he'll be the last one just based on my luck. But I'm really excited to get this guy just because I love everything about what's going on with these figures. So uh, he comes in the same kind of box that Ryu came in. So it's, it's like a lar larger, longer format box. You've got a shot of the figure there on the front with a silhouette almost of the armor, just the armor itself. And then you've got some product shots on both sides. And then the back of the box uh, showcases both forms of the figure, so the armor and the suit underneath, as well as a bunch of product shots of, of what he comes with and how he moves. So uh, great presentation, just like the first time around. So let's do it. Let's pull him out and take a look. And here we go, out of the package, our Ronin Warriors Sage of the Halo figure. Now, this figure is two different things, really. So you've got the base form, and this is how he comes out of the box. So this is the body with minimal armor, and then you're gonna armor him up, and you're gonna turn him into basically what we want him to be. So the fully armored Ronin warrior uh, with all the bells and whistles. But as far as moving him around and, and just talking about it first and foremost, I want to talk about what he's like right out of the box. So this is maybe not the way you're going to display him. I would I would wager it's probably not unless you're, you're uh, you know, big enough to have two, one to, one to display this way and one to display fully armored, but I'm always going to display him fully armored. However, there is still a very nice and very well-engineered figure underneath. So uh, let's see what he can do, see how he moves around, and kind of talk about what's going to differ between uh, this version and the version that has all the armor on it. So uh, to start with, you've got a head that looks up. He looks down really good tilt side to side the neck is independently articulated and it really helps uh, with this figure full rotation as well arms well armor plating does come off so you might have that problem so there's a real world example arms go up and out they of course will rotate all the way around you do have a butterfly joint these armor pads are uh, hinged and they move all the armor uh, that sits over top of joints is articulated you've got a bicep swivel We've got double jointed elbows, and then you've got your ball hinge wrist, so up and down and all around, and then of course move the hinge and move the ball and it'll go wherever you want. You've got a torso cut, so it goes all the way around, backwards, forward, side to side. Uh, you've got your uh, ball waist down here, so he goes all the way over, and then he goes over again. This is an area where you're gonna lose articulation once he's armored because there's gonna be a plate sitting over top of it, but the body itself uh, is very capable. You do have some twist at the waist as well, and then you've got twist at the diaphragm also. Legs go out all the way. This is another area where you will lose some because you got skirt pieces. Uh, you kick forward, and then you kick backwards. You've got your thigh cut because they're uh, balls up there basically. You've got double jointed knees. They go all the way back. And then you've got your rocker down at the ankle. You've got ball hinges as well, um, so you can move them around, you can rotate them, and then hinge up and down in different directions. The Whatever these are called, they're, they're movable. And then you've got toe articulation as well. This piece does come off, so kind of watch moving that around. Uh, but otherwise, he is a, a very, very mobile figure. There's a lot going on in terms of articulation uh, with this line in a general sense. And I think he moves really nicely. You do lose some when he is uh, when he's fully armored, of course, but I don't really, really think it's a big deal. He's still very much capable of moving in just about every direction. So no, no real concerns, but it is, of course, it's a thing. You got to mention it. Now, as far as the overall look and feel, I mean, I'm pretty over the moon with this line. When we got Rio of the Wildfire, uh, that first figure, I pretty much fell in love with it because this is... This is the Ronin Warriors toy line I've wanted for a very, very long time, and Sentinel is continuing to deliver on this line. This is, of course, a lot of reuse from that first figure because all the bodies are going to be basically the same. 
but it looks great. So there's that sort of off-white, slightly gray hue of the undersuit with slight armor underneath it. So he's not armored up, he's not transformed, uh, but some of this stuff is, is considered armor. Obviously the hand pads are armor, uh, the forearm guards are armor because they do come off. You've got the little pieces here. There's still a lot of texture and a lot of uh, little bits and bobs all over it, despite being something that is likely going to be covered by a lot of armor uh, or replaced in some ways. You know, uh, the knees and everything, all this stuff gets replaced. Even the toes get replaced on this guy. So there's a lot that you don't see uh, once you actually kind of build him up. But I do think, I do think that the figure on its own looks really good. If you wanted to display him this way, uh, you certainly can, and he's going to look pretty fantastic. Fantastic. Uh, there's a really great uh, anime likeness, if that's the best way to describe it, for this head sculpt. I think it really, really looks like him. Of course, uh, this is kind of like the base form uh, that comes out, so he's got kind of a stoic expression. You've even got that hair that kind of covers the right, your left uh, eye, so that's very much a hallmark of Sage's look in the show, and I think it comes through really, really nicely here, uh, especially when it comes to the hair, because there is a lot of shading up in there to bring out a lot of those highlights when it comes to all the jagged edges that sort of pop out so he looks he looks pretty fantastic i mean essentially this guy looks like he jumped right out of the show now i'm sure it goes without saying that the main focus of, of this line of these figures is going to be this version the armored up version so after they've transformed after they've gotten fully armored this is what we remember. This is the this is when the episodes get uh, get fun. They get to do the transformation, and then they all get their unique suits of armor. So, what's really cool about and cool while also being a little cumbersome, what's cool about these figures is that you actually do armor them up. So, of course, I've already showed you how he moves around and what's underneath this armor, so you can display him that way. But 99.9% .9 of the time, this is how he's going to be displayed on my shelf. Just like Ryu's never really come out of that armor once I've uh, once I've put it on him. So uh, he does look really fantastic. There is a nice glossy sheen to this armor. Uh, all the colors are really poppy and really saturated, and everything just sort of just sort of bursts out at you because of that sort of off-white undersuit. Just like with Ryu of the Wildfire, uh, he does have magnetic pieces for um, the knee guards and the shin guards, so those are really cool. It helps with articulation so it doesn't actually like kind of grab onto the knee or replace anything. You just pop it on, so I do really like that. Um, you have to pop on the the forearm guards, the shoulder guards as well, which are hinged. It's kind of a double hinge, actually. So you've got the underpiece here, which hinges, and then the larger, more ornamental shoulder guard is hinged on that as well. So it's kind of a two-stage hinge, which does help to get things out of the way a little bit. You do clamp on uh, kind of the skirt pieces. You clamp on the chest guard. And then, of course, you take the, the head apart and you put the helmet on. I'm not going to run through it because it is kind of a long building sequence and and I just don't want to go through trial and error of doing it on camera but it is a very simple process at the same time it does impede articulation in some areas but not really that bad he's still very capable of doing just about everything the big area is definitely the torso so he can bob around he goes side to side and back and forth but he doesn't really crunch or anything anymore because of course he has this sort of uh, sort of plastic shell that sits over top of him but that piece notwithstanding, he is still very, very mobile, even though he's got, say, you know, the shoulder pads, they go up and out of the way. These skirt pieces are also hinged. They go up and out of the way. It doesn't allow him to do the splits, but at the same time, uh, I still think the, the movement possibility on this guy is still very, very robust, and it works really well. And, and I think he just... Ultimately, I think he looks amazing. He, he This isn't my favorite suit of armor, um, but I'm a big fan of the way this all looks. And the fact that even though these guys are, are all unique, you know, there's not really anything here that's the same specifically from Ryu. Uh, it, there is a little bit, but there's a lot of very specific stuff that is different across the board uh, from like the forearm guards to the helmets, of course, to the shoulder pads as well. And I think it all looks fantastic. The colors are all really crisp and clean. The paint is all super, super fine, very, very glossy, and just the overall colors look fantastic. I will say one thing to maybe pay attention to on this figure and this line in particular is any kind of uh, uh, nicking of the parts because I actually 
I don't remember where at this point, but I do remember nicking a piece of Ryu's armor uh, at one point, and it's because it, it's all painted, so uh, you might run into issues. It's a really like hard enamel coating almost is what it feels like, but it all looks tremendous. The sculpt is fantastic. It doesn't make them too bulky or anything like that either, and again, all of the colors are super bright, super vibrant. The metallics are really, really bold while being, of course, very metallic at the same time, and I just like the idea that this is an entire suit of armor. You have to put it on him. It's very much like the transformation sequence in the show. It's a huge, huge aspect of Ronin Warriors is for that scene, that event, that thing that happens every episode, but you get to do it here. Uh, so of course it does change the figure tremendously from what I showed you underneath, but at the same time it, tra it transforms it into something infinitely cooler. Now, as far as accessories goes, Sage has, well, there's a lot. There's a lot in this box, so I guess it really depends on what you want to talk about as far as accessory accessories. So, obviously, he comes entirely unarmored. So, everything there is, technically speaking, an accessory. But I'm not really, I'm not really counting all of that as accessories because this is how he's always going to be displayed anyway. It's basically the thing you're here for, right? So he does come with a bunch of other stuff though. And then of course, we also get the armor display system, I suppose, for lack of a better phrase, to talk about also. So uh, to begin with, he does get his signature uh, sword here, and it's a, it's a monster. So this thing is absolutely huge. Uh, it's taller than the figure. It does sit on his back, so you can put it on uh, this hook, and this is removable if you don't want him to have it on there. You sort of pop it on, and then you can sort of, uh, you can kind of twist it depending on how you angle it there, and it will uh, sit on his back like so. So you can have it displayed while he has it secured on his back. And it's actually uh, three different pieces here. So let's take it off of him. And you get some extra weapons too, technically. So you can pull the blade off and you get what is effectively a throwing star and then a short little dagger here. So you get these two weapons. But of course the, the main event is the sword itself. So it's the, the long blade with the star and the the hilt here, and then you've got this thing. Nice metallic paint on it, it's really shiny. It's got a good luster to it, and of course, its size is, is very imposing. That's a very big thing uh, for him, specifically. We do get some extra face plates. So you get sort of like your standard stoic one on him in the box. We get this one uh, where he's looking slightly to the right. So it's, it's kind of a normal expression, but he's looking, well, he's looking to his left, your right, and he's got a little bit of a smirk. We've got uh, this one where he is uh, screaming. So this is, you know, definitely one where he's using his signature move in some respects. So basically a normal head sculpt just with the screaming mouth open. And then we get this one here with the uh, face guard up. So if you want him fully, fully armored, although they actually don't really use the face guards a lot in the show, uh, he does have the armored mouth guard up, which I absolutely love. I love this look. I usually don't use it on them. Well, on Rayo, I don't anyway. Um, but it's a nice addition because it is definitely a thing that occurs in the show. They transform, the mouth guard goes up, and then they basically just take it off right away usually. Uh, so that's a really cool addition. I mean, it's another very specific thing. And then we get some extra hands. So we get the fists on him in the box. We get a set of um, gripping hands here. So these are wider gripping hands. These are uh, basically just going to be used for the sword, the hilt itself, or the handle. They're wide enough for that sort of uh, uh, handle there. We get a set of more tight gripping hands. These are going to be more specific if you want them to hold on to uh, like the throwing star aspect of the of the sword if you take it apart. And then you get a set of uh, splayed finger style pose hands. And then they, they all have the holes on the top because you will have to take the hand guards off every time you want to do that, because that's a separate piece. So you'll pop that guy out, and then you can put that on all of your hands uh, there if you want to have uh, have them being armored correctly. So that's that's it as far as, I say that's it, that's a ton of stuff. I mean, all the armor on him, the weapon, and then of course you get three extra faces, you get all the extra hands, but there is still even more to this because one of the big transformation things, um, aspects of their armor is the fact that it it is always on display in, in so many words when they transform. And Sentinel gives us the ability to do that uh, with this sort of 
blank body thing that they've decided to include with every single Ronin warrior. And this is what we get when it comes to that display system. So it's a really weird but interesting thing that they're doing here. So this is, of course, Sage back in his quote-unquote default non-armored-up uh, get-up here. So, you know, his undersuit, basically. But the armor is on another figure. So what they give you is essentially a blank, almost entirely unarticulated body that has all the same holes to plug all the armor in. He, the legs are also magnetic, just like Sage's. And of course, he comes with a, uh, with a little stool uh, to sit on as well. So you pop all the armor on him, and then you can just display the armor. So let's move him aside for a second and move the armor over. There are a few, well, there's one unique thing about this as far as parts go. There's a different face that is completely black underneath the face mask uh, there. So there, so there is another uh, face plate that I didn't talk about previously because it doesn't go on the figure itself. It only goes on this body. Uh, it does have some articulation. So you've got a bicep swivel and then the arms can rotate just to, it's really just to get things out of the way so you can put all the armor on it. Otherwise though, it's basically just a static little figure. But I really, really like the idea behind this. Now, I don't use them because if you do this, then you can't armor up the figure. And I don't go for two, um, so I don't have one to display in either configuration. That said, I appreciate what they're doing with this because it is a very specific thing that you see a lot in the show. Uh, so for them to be able to give this to us is a really cool idea. It's, it's maybe a little bit impractical in some respects, but it's a really cool thing that, again, kind of harkens back to a, a thing that happens in the show uh, that you see pretty much, if not every episode, right? Uh, so it is very much a constant thing, and it's, a, it's something that you see when they're calling on their armor. So I do really like it. Uh, again, maybe not the most practical thing, but, but it's a cool little idea, and it works exceptionally well. It very, very cleanly and clearly uh, gets the point across. So, yeah, this is a winner. This is a very expensive figure. I'll say that right away, but it's a winner. Uh, I'm a huge, huge fan of Ronin Warriors. Like so many other things when it comes to toys, it's a nostalgic thing for me. I mean, I have watched this show for 20 plus years, and, and I still love it. I watch it at least once a year at this point, and I'm so, so happy to finally be getting toys for this show. I know that Bandai did the Armor Plus, and they are sort of bringing it back. But that, that line is, is notoriously bad in many ways. It had a lot of problems, and, and this line is more up my alley, this particular form factor, this size. And frankly, Sentinel has absolutely killed it in every aspect, from how you put on the armor to the display system to have the, the blank body to all the accessories, and just the overall look and feel and the articulation is so, so well done on these guys. I'm so happy to be getting them. I'm happy to finally get another one, and I'm really, really looking forward to more hoping we can round out this team sooner rather than later. And even if we never get to the evil warlords, I'll be happy just to get the team. So that's going to do it for this look at the Sentinel Toys Ronin Warriors Sage of the Halo. Let me know what you guys think. Feel free to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And until next time.